this will be one for the record books. I can promise you that. He's huge. His name is Newt. And I've got pictures of him for the last, he's five this year. No, he's six this year. Last year he's five. I have a shed to him. His four-year-old set we didn't find. Three-year-old shed, we have one. One shed. He's an absolute giant. Uh, I can't wait to bring you this episode. Newt's story starts in 2013 when I moved into the area and I befriended a local land manager and hunter. Uh, we became friends and he picked up Newt's two and a half year old side when he was blood trailing a deer he shot. The next year, Newt was three and a half. Um, he's still off our radar. We, we knew about him, we had pictures of him. Uh, Josh was you know, sending me pictures. I was hunting different deer as he was. When he jumped to four and a half, that's when he made his biggest jump. He was 150 inch four year old, beautiful deer. Josh actually had him run in chasing a doe one uh, early November evening and uh, mid stride, Josh was full draw. The doe was right under his stand. Newt was chasing him or chasing her right to the tree stand. He looks up and bolts. In 2015, uh, his, his set right here was found by the farmer. He dissed the corn up and then planted beans. Later that fall, he hit this. Obviously there's electrical tape because the points are broke, but he hit this side with his bean head and found this side right next to it. So this is his four-year-old set when Josh had the opportunity at him. Uh, really, really cool deer. As a five-year-old, Newt was still kind of MIA. He came past my trail camera late February. Uh, Josh had a couple pictures of him, but we just, we couldn't, we didn't know where he was. He just had this heavy mass. He kind of had that goofy bean with that split kind of two. And he just, he never really showed up and gave us an opportunity to hunt him, but I was hunting different deer at the time. Um, harvested a really nice deer. And later that fall, I was tagged out and I took my buddy out to a field where I thought he was coming to, which ended up being where he lost the shed in a bean field, standing beans that the farmer planted. And then uh, last spring we burned it and I did a prescribed burn and I found this side. So that's his five-year-old set. So as a six-year-old in 2000, 17, Newt absolutely blew up. He was a 195 inch whitetail. Uh, I couldn't sleep at night. I had pictures of him nearly every night coming in out of a corn, standing cornfield. So I got permission, we planted food plots, we did all that jazz. And early October, uh, one of my friends was here uh, harvesting some does with some doe tags. He killed his does and then came and sat with me that Sunday, and wouldn't you know, he walked by. Thirty-five yards in the tall grass. I just did not feel comfortable and/or ethical taking that shot, so I let him pass. As season went by, I had over 80 sits trying to kill this deer. Um, the day before gun season, he shows up on my cameras, going back to bed, about two miles away from his core area. He's checking does, trying to find a, a hot doe. He come out 25 yards. I settled my pin. He ducked my arrow. Second shot, he come back about five minutes, same spot, because these little bucks were sparring and he wanted to break up the fight. Same spot, second arrow, I aimed low, didn't move. I should have killed him, but I did. You know, things work in uh, mysterious ways. End of season, I, uh, I was at the Deer Classic, one of my cameras went off, walking out of the Deer Classic, he lost a side. And I couldn't find that side. 
to save the life of me. A couple days later, we walked back by. He dropped this side within an hour, and I went and picked it up. All right, guys, it's uh, Sunday, the Deer Classic, and <coughs> got a little bit of a cold, but from the tree, I videotaped him to the exact spot he was standing when I could have had a shot in that clearing. His antler dropped last night. I don't know where his other side is, but this is his left side. I have the left side from the previous year. I haven't went and picked it up yet, but it's absolutely huge. I just seen the pedicle. I'm like, is that a stump? There's no stumps out here in the CRP. I mean, I walked in the grass right up to it. I cannot wait to pick this up. This thing is huge. Oh my God. 2018 season rolled around, same thing. Pictures of him early, and uh, I knew where he's living. Um, he really liked the cornfields. Uh, he, he liked to bed in them. So there's two cornfields, and I was his core area was right in the middle. So he'd come there at night, live in the corn during the day. The season rolled around. I, I rode him off. I hunted other deer. Um, had a couple really nice deer to chase. And a day before early muzzleloader season, I had. It was Friday night and I got pictures of him coming out of the corn. So I went and hunted Saturday morning uh, in the middle of the farm, checked all the cameras on the south, he never showed up. So that night I called my buddy Morgan. I said, dude, let's go kill this deer. I went and purchased my early muzzleloader tag around noon and we got set up. We did a hang and hunt, the, the pro sticks and the vantage point stands. And I told Morgan, I said, right at dark, you know, 20 minutes before dark, before legal shooting light was up, he was either going to do it or not. Last night, I'm sitting at a different floor. And, wouldn't you know it, the deer I want to kill steps out here four minutes before legal shooting lights up. So, he was in the area. We're going to try to get him killed tonight. I went and got my own early muscle up tag. That's why I got the orange on. So, sitting there, I'm watching my phone, counting down, I have 15 minutes left, I'm looking at my phone, put my phone away, I look to the right, boom, there he was. Morgan had the camera on his lap, and it happened so fast, where he came out behind this tree, straight downwind, jumped, came across the road from the corn, straight downwind, and he ran to the doe that was in front of us, feeding on the alfalfa sprouts. And it was like, now or never, I put my, my scope on him and pulled the trigger, and Morgan, he hit record and it was that fast. As he ran over the hill, I second guessed myself. I missed him three times before and I looked to Morgan and I said, dude, I missed. I missed at 50 yards. We got down out of the stand, went and looked for blood. Um, Morgan found some hair, found some blood right away at impact. So we backed out, went back to the house, watched the, the footage, and uh, called uh, my buddy Josh up, who also was you know, sharing the pursuit of this deer with me. We walk up to him, and uh, his head's kind of laying down in the grass, and it was 
It was a site that I've been dreaming about for a long time. And here he is. He is an absolute stud. His bases are just huge. So we're closing the chapter on Newt. After harvesting Newt on the 13th of October, you know, I was still flying high. I, uh, I had a bow tag in my pocket and I had a farm that had some really nice deer on it. Um, I had some blurry pictures of a, what looked like a mainframe six by six and he was a stud, but I also had pictures on the pro cam of a deer I called Coolio, a nice uh, five by five, he was a 10 pointer. This really nice deer, four or five years old, I'm not really sure, it's a new farm. But when I went to check my cameras that night, I had an absolute giant on it. It was that deer, that, that six by six, that my wife named Cowboy. So I'm sitting in the stand, and it's uh, 6.33, I look up in the bean field, and on the two track where the sprayer kind of ran over some beans, here he come on a beeline right to my tree. He was an absolute monarch, and I was shaking so bad, my, my heart was just pounding out of my chest, and he walked right to the you know downwind side, base of my tree 20 yards away, and I put a rage right in him, and <laughs> I couldn't believe it happened. Two 180 inch plus deer in eight days. My all time high as a deer hunter, I don't know if I'll be able to beat it, but this is what we do it for. So thank you for watching.